Hey there, everybody. Welcome to Hail Yes, the Detroit Free Press podcast about University of Michigan athletics. I'm Tony Garcia, Michigan beat writer for the Free Press, joined as always by our Big Ten insider, Reiner Saban. We are recording, got to double check the dates, 14th, 13th. Got, got the date ahead of me. You'll be released on the 14th. Uh, so we're just more than two weeks, a little under three weeks out from the Rose Bowl. Uh, so you wouldn't think that's what we'd be thinking and talking about. However, Reiner, there's been uh, basketball has also uh, taken over some headlines, and we also figured this is a good week uh, to discuss basketball and really uh, just sort of air, air those things out and, and get the state of that program. Uh, but first, let's get the state of you. How's Reiner Saban doing? I'm doing okay. Just uh, enjoying a little break between games. Uh, you know, this uh, this little stretch before the before we get to the the heavy, uh, heavy game against Alabama on, uh, on January 1st. But yeah, it's, uh, it's a little bit of a slow period. Not for Michigan football, though. They're obviously busy with the re- finalists in their recruiting class and dipping into the transfer portal. Right. But, but for us, because because they're gone, our access around things is, uh, you know, it's going to be about a week, 10 days off. I mm-hmm. tried to sneak out on, uh, on my buddy's bachelor party uh, real quick and just, I guess, just don't take 48 hours at any point uh, is really the lesson learned there. Uh, yes. I was not going to travel to Iowa just because of uh, the timing of things and all the travel and things we have coming up anyway. Sure. Uh, but lo and behold, um, it would have been a good one to go to because not only did Michigan basketball win 90 to 80, uh, sort of right that ship. We'll get into that maybe a little bit. Uh, but that's the night when a lot of the recent reports have sort of unfolded. And that is why. We bring in Sean Windsor, our columnist. You thought I was going to talk about all of those, all, all, the, all the scandal. No, 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 not yet. We have to say hi to Sean first, and then we talk about it. Sean, uh, we need to get the state of you. Second podcast today, you said? I yeah, know. yeah. I, uh, I, had to, I had to hang out. You know, the free press makes me do it. I had to hang out with Carlos Menares for our, for our weekly show. Hey, it's good to be here. It's, it's the first time. I think it's uh, my first visit here. It's an honor. A privilege. It's uh, hard to see. Reiner's got his baseball cap pulled down so far over his brow, but uh, I, all I all I see is a sh- I see some pale down around the chin, and then a shadow, which is probably how some of the readers see him too. It's but it's a mystery, right? It's it's uh, he, lo- he it's, loves to be he, he loves to be a, a mysterious figure, a, a mysterious man. Yeah, I don't know. No, and I think I just saw a slight smile too, and that's always a that's that's always a plus. No, I. I Look, I could. We can talk basketball all day. It, what's What's funny is we're obviously talking about Jawan Howard and the, the Michigan the, the Michigan basketball team. But you you might make an argument that there are two other teams that are in some ways bigger messes. Clearly, the Detroit Pistons and the Michigan State Part Spartans. This is not that podcast, but but what is going on with basketball in our state? It's it's really you're, something. You're supposed to be in charge of it. For those who who somehow don't know, uh, I mean, all of you. By now, if you're listening to this podcast, are certainly familiar with Sean Windsor, um, but he is, I, I mean, just a basketball nut, uh, like like you wouldn't believe. And uh, so I, I'm I'm really just glad to see you're still in one piece. Uh, like, as he said, I mean, Michigan State, I think the first team to start four and five uh, after starting in the top five of the AP poll, guilty. I put them there myself uh, in, in like 40 or 50 years, the Pistons, historic. 20 losses, not stopping anytime soon. But as you mentioned, we're here to talk to Juan Howard. And uh, it sounds like he uh, has found himself in yet another controversy. Here's the latest uh, per Brendan Quinn of The Athletic, because uh, there's a lot going on. There are some details, some clear, some not. He seems to have the most. So I'm just so I'll just flat out cite him. He does a great job uh, as well, even though he is our competition. So here's what here's what he has reported to have happened thus far. So. Uh, it was last Friday, December 7th, uh, Jawan Howard and uh, strength coach John Sanderson, they get into a, a, a back and forth of sorts. And the important part is, since then, John Sanderson has reportedly filed an HR claim with the university, and uh, he did not travel with the team to Iowa, the four game I mentioned, uh, and has not been reportedly at practice. Now, uh, I've uh, been trying to speak to uh, program spokesmen, uh, other people around the program who had normally spoken to me uh, have been quieter than usual, which led me to believe something was up. And then even people who uh, are tasked with speaking with us have really sort of kicked the, this can down the road. So 
not a lot known uh, right now specifically, but operating under all of that, uh, Sean, and on the backdrop of Juwan Howard's past, uh, striking an, an assistant at Wisconsin uh, and getting into a, a, a very heated back and forth with former Maryland coach Mark Turgeon. That is why this is news. Well, first of all, you can imagine having watched how he interacted with Turgeon. I think I remember being at, at, at that game. I think it was it was that the bubble year? Was that in Indianapolis? I'm, uh, I'm, I, it, I think it, it was. Yeah. But but watching the how intense and how quickly that got and how and Turgeon was is got a bit of an issue himself in that way. But if you imagine the proximity, I mean, they were separated by scores table and, and whatever else on the court. And you think about Howard and Sanderson, who's no, who's what six, eight himself played college basketball himself. Right. And Stan and then how he did that might get, I mean, you, that's that you can see that you can see that in your mind's eye. But to me, the biggest issue is, well, not the biggest issue, but it's, the fact that he filed or allegedly reportedly filed an HR report, all right, because this kind of yelling and screaming goes on inside basketball, football prayers, you know, maybe not that often, but from time to time, and you handle it behind closed doors, right? What had to have happened or what has been happening or what is this feeling, the vibe in that program that he filed an HR report, right, and not just – handle it themselves or maybe you bring in the ad and and that or maybe who knows maybe these days the protocol demands that if you take it to the ad they have to go to the hr but but why did it leave the basketball offices what does that say about the larger state of the program that he filed it yeah i think i think you're asking a very pointed question and sean it feels like this i mean if this were a one-off just something that fell out of the ordinary you're right. It doesn't feel like that's maybe a route you would take. Perhaps you would handle it in-house. And I don't think it would have gotten the, the the reaction that it's that has that has been built up. And you try not to look too much into it in social media and Twitter and those things. But there's just qu- quite the backdrop. And and Reiner, I, I don't know. You do wonder how it, it's like whenever anything leaks, you wonder how it gets out and who did who did this and who wanted this to get out and why. Well, I mean, if you're filing an HR claim also when you know that the head coach has a zero tolerance policy based off of the incident in Wisconsin, then I think, you know, the motivation (laughs) seems pretty obvious there. I mean, you know, this is this is a play, uh, you know, that obviously, you know, gets some university involvement again in Howard's behavior. And so there's there's some questions about what's going on there. But I mean, you know, Sanderson was obviously well aware of what Howard was facing, you know, with the, with the zero tolerance policy and maybe, you know, I mean, it's hard to know exactly what the reasoning behind it, but I mean, I would think that he was fully aware of that and that could have been what prompted the HR claim to be filed in the first place because now it becomes a university matter. Yeah, it's, yes, it's certainly left the program and uh, it's left many of us trying to, ask questions and those of us answer questions as best we can. But maybe this is a little bit putting the cart before the horse, but we're going to be talking about in this, in this show, maybe the sort of the myriad of factors that have sort of led to, to this moment, the trajectory of Michigan basketball, the state of Michigan basketball. And one of these things, one of those things, when I think of it from my lens is just the access, what I can see. And that's, Frankly, not much. Uh, Since Michigan basketball was eliminated uh, last March, we haven't spoken to Jordan Howard. Uh, Not on on the record. Uh, We had one sanctioned trip with the team to the hospital uh, when when they did a visit, which was, which frankly was a tremendous experience to be part of. It was awesome to get to see them in that light uh, and get to see Jawan in that light. And you, you, they, I know they just, Juwan just shared another post on social media earlier this week. They just went again. Uh, and so that is, it. and we rode up in an elevator with him. And so just chit-chatted a little bit. That's the only time uh, on or off the record. Now, of course, this year has been unlike any other. He had the heart procedure on September 15th. Uh, and that was, uh, it was sort of four to six week, like immediate recovery timetable and six to 12 weeks sort of at length to return to the program. Well, as of now, we are at 12 weeks. 
and, and Jawan has been back. He, uh, he he traveled with the team to New, to New York and watched from the stands. He traveled with them to the Bahamas and was on the bench. Then he traveled with them to Oregon, uh, and he was named the assistant. Uh, so he's been very involved in, in a lot of ways, yet mysteriously kind of, just kind of absent from – the front, front from the the public eye. Sean, is that is that even a, a relevant point? Do you see that as a relevant point? I don't know that it's. I, I wouldn't I mean, look when John Beeline took over. He he did more or less the bare minimum himself. He wasn't used to it. He come from West Virginia. Before that, he'd been all these stops. There was very little press. It just he had to get used to it. He wasn't used to being in a market like this. And uh, the team struggled at first, which which made him even more reluctant. Plus, he it it, it 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 took a while for him to believe that people could be around and write and, and understand basketball. You know, he was a basketball kind of genius that way, right? And so there was a there was a gap there between what he thought reporters knew and but the but once that was over time, and once once he started to kind of gain trust and realize that hey, this is part of the gig. He was. It wasn't like Tom Izzo, where you can just walk into the office or go see practice or whatever. But he was, he was very open. And and I've been kind of waiting to see that with Jawan Howard. But I was told and he was hired. You probably were t- too, Tony. That he just he just doesn't trust reporters. He doesn't like the media. He didn't have to deal with it in in Miami much at all, right? And I and I think that stems. I think part of it's just who he is. It's in his DNA, and part of it stems from the Fab Five. He just has never been comfortable with it, and but I. But having said all that, is that related to how he is? To the fact that he's he's got some anger management issues. I mean, is that is that? I don't know that those two things are related. I bring up Beeline just to say he was not like that at all, and he didn't like the press for a while. It took him. So I, I, you know, I mean, accountability. Yeah, I, I guess. But I just, I just, I, I don't think. First of all, if he were winning, we'd see a lot more people defending him right now, right? They lost what five or six at, at once. I think five or six before the Iowa win. I want to say, and, and you know how I hate to be sound cynical, but Reiner and I talk about this all the time. That's that would change this to a degree too. If he had a, if he had a Final Four level team, a national title contender team, then we'd be viewing this not you, the three of us, but we'd be viewing this differently too. And I don't want to sound so cynical, but that's just how it goes. But I don't know that one or the other is related. It's, it's frustrating for sure. If you, especially in your position, Tony, where you rely on some access and the idea that he hadn't talked is, is kind of ridiculous, but I'll tell you real quick. I was at a summer league uh, for the Pistons and he was there courtside watching his uh, jet who was, was playing for the Orlando magic. And during at halftime, I walked over and shook his hand. Normally, when I'm around a coach like that or a team I cover, I see this. You sit there and shoot the breeze. It was a brief handshake. Hi, how you doing? And that was it. It's just it's mm-hmm. always been like that with him. Yeah. No. And let's get back to the winning aspect because that really is the, the key thing, right? Let's let's compare this and and Reiner. This is I mean Reiner's obviously a big basketball guy, a big sports guy, but football is also super super in his wheelhouse. I mean, compare it. You don't even need to leave the athletic department, right? Uh, to Michigan football, two big scandals, uh, two not two big scandals. Let's run that back. Two NCAA investigations around the program, around the coach uh, that that are encircling the season. Yet there has been no, to your point, like what Sean just said. Nobody is questioning Jim Harbaugh or or, or any of this, at least within the Michigan circle, right? Uh, because. 13 and 0 winning again and again and again. Uh, how, how do you see that layer of it playing into this Reiner? What the, the fact that he's, he, he, that the program's not doing well versus say Michigan football. Right. Well. I mean, just, just yeah, the trajectory. Well, well. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, it, it's, you know, I, I look at it also as more of an administrative thing too. I mean, it comes from the top. I mean, Ward Manuel's never talks in the media either i mean and and so this is this is tolerated i mean jim harbaugh doesn't talk outside you know the season essentially i mean he speaks once during the spring and uh that's it and then you know you don't get him until you know big 10 media days usually and i guess there's that june recruiting event uh in detroit you know the sound mind sound body you know situation that he always goes to or whatever or whatever whatever camp in uh big rapids 
Yeah, I mean, there's a, or a Big Rapids, Wayne State, wherever it happens to be held. Uh, that's the only other time you get him. And so uh, it, it's part of, you know, covering Michigan athletics is that, you, you know, the, the people in charge and they all happen to be Michigan alums. I mean, this, you know, goes back to Bo Schembechler. Uh, Schembechler hated the media. You know, I mean, there's a story in like a 1981 Sports Illustrated in which he kind of talks about uh, how he doesn't like the media. And um, and so it, it all comes from him. I mean, Ward Manuel played for Bo Schembechler. Jim Harbaugh did. War Manuel is Juwan Howard's, you know, boss. And so, I, again, it's part of it's part of the culture that's at Michigan where they don't want to, uh, you know, handle these things. And also, you know, again, it's really interesting to see what War Manuel does because he he generally is very reactive. He's never proactive. Yeah. He's always reactive. He's always having to, and he takes his time and and everything, and almost kind of wishes it away until he has to finally act. I mean, that was a situation, uh, you know, going back to the uh, Mel Pearson situation, uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm trying to think what else, um, you know, maybe even the Shemi, you know, situation. It's on, <laughs> I mean, that was apparently in the, you know, on it, on his plate for, for months. And, you know, it finally, uh, it came to a head and they had to, they had to react in that situation too when it, when they uh, you know he resigned after. But I mean you know he he was he was already you know kind of in the process of being hired long before that. So I mean it's just it's always it's always a reactive stance for Michigan. And so here they are again in this kind of same order situation where you have a scandal of a, and like there's not really much information coming out and there are they've closed ranks and everybody's left speculating. And then we're going to finally hear That's, about what, what's going to happen. I mean, it just, again, nothing, nothing ever seems to change there. That's, a, that's always my, my argument because by not, by not speaking it, all it does is stir the pot and, and let rumor fly about, which is not, which is what we do not do. Right. And so, yeah. and, and so we're just not going to p- participate in that, which is why we want more access to, in order, in order, because, and, and I guess that's our lens. So, for, forget about that. Now, big picture, Sean. Uh, I mean, the basketball team is six and six, uh, or excuse me, five and five, one and one in the Big Ten. Uh, they just got a bigger win against Iowa, but his first year, COVID season happens, and so there's no tournament. Then they go to the Elite Eight, they go to the Sweet Sixteen, and then last year they missed the missed the tournament altogether, eliminated in the NIT. Uh, Right now, so far this year, they look just right headed for another similar bubble season. And doesn't that you were starting? We, that's what we were just talking about. Doesn't that play a part of this picture and how much leash uh, you have? Because you, you, I, I can't remember which one of you mentioned it. Uh, in Juwan Howard's contract, there is a zero tolerance policy uh, since the incident with Wisconsin. So you, you look at how this incident is viewed as the the magnitude of it. And then look at big picture where things are headed. Is the program headed in the right direction, the wrong direction or the wrong direction, Sean, where are you at? Well, it's interesting to think about the zero zero, uh, tolerance policy. I, I, I hate to make assumptions. I, I wonder, is it just if it's physical uh, you, is there something in there if you are made to feel intimidated, but it's not physical, but it's verbal, right? It, it, you, if you're two inches from somebody's face, but you don't actually touch, I mean, I, I'd be real curious what the what the language is. And obviously, HR, it's up to HR to a degree, but when when it's political like this, which it is, right, and, and there are public relations involved, then people are a lot higher going to get, you know, going to override whatever potentially override whatever HR does. I mean, it's, it's, a it's a tough, it's a really tough spot um, because what the, to me, what they're going to have to figure out is if, if it's worth it, right? That that's the thing. What do the players think of them? What, what's it, what do the assistants think? What's it been like? I've, I've never really heard anything untoward in terms of all of that. It's it, no players and assistants. I mean, I mean, they all like it. Uh, they from, do. From, they do. From what I've told, right. this assist- these assistants have all been together the whole time, and I mean, look, I mean, I, I was amazed that uh, per- personally that neither Terrence Williams nor Will Cheddar transferred out. 
Uh, you bring in, I mean, you bring in Trey Jackson, you bring in uh, Olivier Kamwa. I mean, those are two power forwards. They're directly playing your position. He has his son, Jace Howard, in the same position on the team. Uh, I mean, there's a ton of depth there. And, and in this day and age, there's something to be said for those guys wanting to to stay to stay for him. And it's the and same with the coaches. It, I, I mean, yeah, I remember his first year talking to Isaiah Livers. You know, obviously now he plays for the for the Pistons, and he loved J- John Beeline. He came to play for John Beeline, but he, he talked a little bit, and he was careful how he said it. But that they felt a little freer, right? That they that that, that they would it was a little looser in some ways, not in a bad way, but just uh, John Beeline was a, a great coach, but also a micromanager down to deciding you know when his players should open and shut their blinds to get sunlight into the hotel rooms. And uh, I actually saw that happen one time in Indianapolis, but but in any case, so so there is that, and and if he's got enough of that goodwill built up, that 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 will help him, right? You know, he can't keep losing, you can't keep having six and six starts, right? But yeah. well, uh, who, it is. Who, who, getting, who pardon me, I apologize, Sean. I, I my question was, who are you building goodwill with? Right, like like players, coaches, administration, fans, because I think, I I think he's viewed differently by the by different people. No, you're right. It depends on if the players and the and the coaches. Obviously, there's an issue with Sanderson, but if the players and the coaches feel a certain way, larger, you know, folks within the larger athletic department, uh, you know, that think he cares is trying to do the win in a certain way that's that promotes the university that's good for if they think all that and this is just a blip and a tough season that's been way exacerbated by the health issues he's had not being just all of that and want to give him a pass you know and think well okay so he lost his temper a little bit and they started shouting at each other i you know i don't know i i mean i I could see depending on what's the languages in the in the policy him maybe losing his job but i'd be surprised at this point that they would want to give up on him unless there was a clear violation that that has to do with the language in the uh, in the contract. Reiner? Well, I mean, there just seems to be inertia in general with Michigan athletics, and especially when it comes to their own people. Uh, I mean, you know, you've got a Michigan man in charge. You've got a Michigan man leading the basketball program. You've got a Michigan man leading the football program. I mean, that one of those Michigan men, with, I'm alluding to Jim Harbaugh, you know, look to leave the program twice. I mean, I mean, it was basically interviewing uh, for other jobs, you know, each of the last two off seasons. And after one of those interviews, they, you know, they rewarded him with a contract extension. And so it's just, uh, you know, they uh, seem to have different, maybe, you know, standards for different, you know, guys that come through the fold, you know, fold with them. And I think their, you know, their first instinct is to not want to move on from, somebody and give them every ch- possible chance so i would i would suggest that their inertia is generally the the prevailing policy at, and uh and way of governance at, at the university of michigan so it's, let's say he's not fired then what right uh because to get back to sean's point i could i could see a situation completely where i mean this this heart situation is no small thing right it's a big deal and i mean like any person any human should he should take care of himself and be prioritized. And let's say the season fell by the wayside because of that. He was never in it. Uh, I've long thought that well, since long thought since that heart thing ha- situation happened, I thought that it uh, just a bad season would not get rid of Jawan. Right? Like he 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 would have uh, he's done enough in in a short period of time to earn another season. However, it is the off court stuff. That has that has been that has been the question, and um, for it to be physical, not in, I'm not saying anything about this instance, but previously outside the program, and now something of any level raising to the point of an, of an HR controversy within the program. Uh, that's when the question for me arises: When is it worth it? When is it not? And that brings us back to the. To, to the just the winning uh, or, or lack thereof. Uh, I mean, I think it's something like 27 and 32 in their last 59 games against high major competition. Uh, that's over the last three years. So it's there's there's the winning aspect of it as well, Sean. Do you think how do you think they keep this together and win enough this season? 
Yeah, I don't know that they can win enough this season. I mean, we'll we'll see. The fact that he hadn't been on the bench and he makes a difference, right? I mean, Phil Martelli may be a lot more jovial and for reporters to deal with, and but to the players and they need him on the bench. And I, I don't know he's not gonna he's not gonna make him a national title contender, but uh I'd like to see I'd like to see what that look like. That looks like a little bit because the coach does make a difference, especially especially in basketball. It's different than football where you can game plan all week and make your mark the way Harbaugh did, right? And not saying right. that well, they didn't well, miss him. Been, but he's been on the bench for a few weeks, even if if acting in a in an assistant role. Um, yeah, but not really controlling. It's not it's it's just a weird dynamic right now. And I, I don't dynamic. you know, it it really is. It's it's just unusual. And I I don't think he has to win big this year to save his job necessarily. Right. He he has done enough. Not only that, he's still again, if if stuff comes out and he got physical, which the university's claiming he's not, we have no reason to believe that right now. But uh if something else comes out or if just what was said, it, it turns out it was really ugly, then that'd be one thing. But if it's a heated match, a shouting match, I guess that's redundant. You know, HR can handle that. I, I don't I don't see I think I think Howard can can overcome that, you know, because he's done enough, like you said, and he's still. You now this could change again over time, but he's still beloved. I mean, to to, to Reiner's point about being a Michigan guy, he's not just a Michigan guy. He's part of one of the most iconic, and he was the most beloved member of that Fab Five, right? Mm-hmm. And he had that he has a, an amazing backstory and is raised by his grandma. That's all part of the narrative with him too, in a way that's not even with Harbaugh. It's obviously football is more important at the school, but th- there's there's some of that that should yeah, help. The school him. doesn't even recognize the Fab Five banners. I mean <laughs> no, but the way they see Howard, the way the way Howard's viewed, the way he's viewed, the way he's viewed in the NBA community, right? And how respected he is. I mean it would it's gonna take a lot. To get to get rid of it. I mean, he, did, he did lose Hunter Dickinson this past year. I mean, I mean, Hunter Dickinson is uh, was probably the most important player that he's had since he's been there. I mean, even with all yeah, the, the cut, I don't think they minded the that. I don't. Think, I don't well, think they minded I mean, that. And, and that was. I, an I think. I think they. I think they helped him out. To be honest with you. Well, well, I mean, that may be true, but it's still, you know, again, he's the lead player for one of the top teams in the country now at, at Kansas. And, you know, it's uh, an, another year with him. You know, I mean, if he if Hunter Dickinson felt like, you know, th- that his best place was Michigan, he would have likely stayed here. You know, well, also, I mean, he, he's a he's a college player. Uh, like He's not going to the NBA. Likely, and uh, the NIL deals are are more plentiful in Kansas. Like this is when he's getting paid. So I think I think on both ends that that he went for the money. He went for the money, and I don't. And I think they. I I can't prove this, but so I shouldn't even say this on our free podcast. But no, I I don't know that they wanted him to stay. Yeah. No. I. Right. There were you. You know what I know, right? Yeah. So I mean, everybody. Everybody saw what happened last season. And everybody yeah, yeah. knows and really how he was, was and yeah. what he did and the, 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 the way it looked on the court and how fractured that was. That was part of how it was off the court. I mean, yeah, no. So I, I don't. Yeah, but the yeah. optics, you know, the optics would suggest, I mean, you know, that, that that's, that it's not a great look when you lose, you know, again, the top player on your team. I mean, unquestionably. And, you know, Michigan is five and five right now. I mean, it's not like they're, you know, kicking butt, you know, without him. I mean, it's not like they're all their issues have been resolved. You know, uh, they've got some serious problems on court, you know, with that. I mean, especially not that Hunter Dickinson was going to provide any more defense than maybe that they're getting. But, you know, they've they've got, you know, I mean, they're not markedly better because he left. Uh, and, you know, I don't know how how much worse they are if if they are worse, but. You know, it's not like everything was solved by him leaving the fold. And, uh, you know, suddenly there was this kumbaya moment within the program where everybody's just, you know, uh, all, you know, as one and they're playing uh, lights out on both ends of the floor. I don't know that there is, but just the vibe of this year's team, uh, it, it, it was already prior to this. Right. Uh, what, and I, I haven't seen the team since since this came out uh, this weekend, but. 
it, it was just better. Uh, I think Olivier oh, was, was, come what, is, is just a leader that has not been around this program in some no, years. Oh, it is. Doug, like Doug yeah, is just uh, ready. Um, it's just he's got him. Yeah. It, it, it just it, it 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 does feel different. Trump. No, I'm I'm with you, Reiner. In theory, when when a program, whether it's high basketball or high football, or high major, you know, and you lose a player, but but I don't think. I mean, maybe to you, but the people that love the program and like basketball, know basketball. They, they were happy to see him go. That's that's all I'm saying. Is it? And I know that sounds strange because they weren't. They weren't. You're right. They're not any better without him, but they weren't necessarily better with him based on just a lot of factors. And I don't want to throw. Dickinson under the bus. It's just there were a lot. There were some issues that weren't necessarily his fault. It's just how he was and how it fit. And basketball's just like that. It's a small locker room, and one guy can submarine it in a way that you can't even have football. Right? You can't in but football. You isolate. Coach's, isn't that a coach's responsibility to rectify that? I mean, you know, obviously, Bill yeah, Self get him out. <laughs> Bill Self, no, but Bill Self took him on. I mean, Bill Self is a, a super accomplished coach, much more no, than for sure. Howard. And he took no, him for on sure. and, uh, that, and invited him to his program uh, with the potential that, that it could have ruined the chemistry there. But he seemed, you know, like he was able to figure it out or was willing to work through to be able to figure it out. Why is why is John, Juwan Howard given any kind of, uh, you know, free pass on that end, you know, to not, to not you know, try to do that? I mean, was it, was, if it was just a solely an NIL argument, sure. I mean, maybe Kansas is the better option, obviously. You know, and and the winning option, and it, there was never going to be any way that Michigan was going to save that. But if it was if it was this chemistry thing that you're alluding to, then that's something that the head coach needs to work out. Because I mean, again, Hunter Dickinson is a valuable asset. I mean, right now he leads Kansas with you know in points and rebounds, nineteen point four and twelve point six. That's pretty good stuff, and one point three blocks. He, he, you know, he's a team leader for the number two team in the country in three major categories. Right. Right. But, but Kansas basketball and Michigan basketball are not created equal, right? Like, so look at the no. player and look at their situation. So Randy, Randy, Randy Moss, right? Diva, diva receiver everywhere he goes, falls in line pretty quick when he gets to new England, right? Bill, Bill Belichick has that cachet. Bill self has that cachet. And I, and I think you're making a good point and it is on the coach. I think, I think maybe I'm walking into your point, right? That it's on the coach and all these things, but, yeah, Juwan that's a big part of coaching. If, if players work up to them in in, in, a, in a lot of ways, and and maybe that makes the point. But there is just there are some places where the culture is bigger than the player, and I think it and it needs to be. I'm not sure it is right now at Michigan, and they're trying to to change that. That was kind of the issue last year with superstars like Jet Howard and Hunter. They were bigger than the team was. Their um, best player last year was a two guard who could check. It was a two way guy. Yeah, right? I, mean, yeah, that's, yeah, no, yeah. I mean, that's who they that's who they yeah, missed the yeah. most. Well, sure, but I mean, but you know, again, I think it's a coach's responsibility to be able to get all those pieces to work together. And if there are issues, then you know that needs to be resolved. I mean, you can't. I mean, if JJ McCarthy, you know, left Michigan after you know a year, and uh, you know, and then it turns out it was a chemistry issue. I mean, like. That's something that you know Jim Harbaugh would need to work out, and I don't think it would happen under Jim Harbaugh. I mean, you know, I mean, there like was a like yeah, right? type, yeah, player. Yeah, right. Gonna, no, no, exactly. I don't see that, what, I don't see that happening. You know what Tony just said? What? What? I said, I said, like your like your senior captain quarterback who transferred out, K. McNamara. He literally. Well, did. I know. Well, I know. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, what, what they had McCarthy though. Uh, you know, arguably a better quarterback option, and I think they, think they, have like, they feel. No, I don't. Yeah, yeah, I don't think exactly. Yeah. Dickinson left for the money, right? <laughs> so we <laughs> we we can say that he left for the money. That's why he left. All I'm saying is they weren't sad to see him go, and I think Dickinson was oh, ready yeah. to go. And he wasn't just here one year; he played here three years, and that's the difference. And three years is a long time. Is it? Is it a coach's responsibility after three years? I don't know what how it's Howard's responsibility to be have good, have a good team this year. Forget Dickinson, right? And, and he's and not Kate done. Also, that. And Cade also tra- transferred after he was benched. I mean, basically in favor of McCarthy. McCarthy won the starting job. Then Cade got hurt. Then he transferred. You know, it wasn't Cade transferring when he was the leader of the team. You know, I mean, Hunter Dickinson was 
was the leading <laughs> leader of the team. He was the face of Michigan basketball. He's, but he I'm wasn't the, the leader of the team. He's leader. not the lead. He's never been the leader of the team. I mean, he, no, that's not I mean, his personality. But, I mean, he was the face of the uh, the program. I mean, and a person that would have merited being able to transfer into a program like Kansas. I mean, there's very – I mean, who who, on, who else on Michigan's current roster would, would be courted by Kansas? <sighs> Maybe no, nobody else. But I just don't. I just I, the fact that he left for more money after three years. Um, I just don't. Yeah, I don't see that as an indictment on Howard. There's plenty to talk about and criticize Howard about. But 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 Dickinson walking away for more money after kind of yeah. I, to me, that's not one of them. But but the point is that there are many things and. It, to that have all created this conversation and another the, one of them has come this week uh just i mean just with altercations off off the court and then they're two and five in their last seven i, I, I know we keep saying it and we can kind of be, begin to wind this down here but john i think just in all of our discussion and our different viewpoints look at how many things that have been able to be a, a talking point i mean Never mind that there was one player in this last recruiting class, right? That I mean, we haven't even mentioned that. Uh, maybe he's back. I mean, they they're struggling to bring in guys, some guys through the through the transfer portal. Now that's not Jawan's fault. Uh, when Caleb Love and other guys like that, and Terrence Shannon the year before are turned away academically, but there's a lot that like even the thing like recruiting and like all the things that he was supposed to just be able to knock out of the park, they are not getting knocked out of the park. No, that's a much bigger issue because, especially because he recruited well to begin with, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, well, I, I, he, he brought Dickinson in, added him to, and got Wagner to sign. Although that was mostly Beeline, his connection to his older brother. But sorry, yeah. sorry, Reiner. His best years were with Beeline players. I mean, that's that's just the fact. With with a, mean, with a mix, right? It was a mix. It was a but, hybrid. I mean, so. He, he brought toughness in a way and uh, and a little bit more flow and defense was a little bit more important. And he combined that with the skill of Livers and Wagner, you know, two, two NBA forwards, especially Wagner and, and, and yeah. two way, two way guys, by the way. Right. Yeah. And then, I mean, and then, then the right, the proper fit of transfers, Shawnee Brown and Mike Smith and like, and, and it all just kind of, kind of came, kind of came together. No, no, you're right. You're right. So if you think about it, it was really just Livers. Who else was who else was Beeline's guy in that team? I mean, Wagner, could you count him as Beeline? He was recruiting. Yeah, I mean, he was, yeah, but uh, but uh, yeah. but they were better when Dickinson was a freshman. Their best team was Dickinson with a freshman with with Brown, the transfer, the point guard, and, and then Davis uh, was still on that team. Who? Uh, yeah, yeah. So so it was a it was really a a mix, and I don't. He might not have another team that good. We'll see. No, also Xavier Simpson. Was, was there too? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. They were they were better the year, year after he left. Get kind of what Sean we talked about. It kind of looks like what Michigan State's got going on a little bit right now. When you when you got that point guard who can't shoot the three, and you can sag off of it, and all they can do is get it. It it, it complicates things, but we don't want to derail this. Yeah, no, no. He he's stuck, and I feel like that's where Michigan. You're talking about Izzo. He's stuck a little bit right now, and it's of his own doing. Howard was stuck a little bit last year and right now, and that's of his own doing. But but sometimes you just cycle through that. Yeah. You know, yeah. Unless and you're so, Kansas, unless you're Alabama in football or whatever, or you're Kansas in basketball, or, I mean, Kentucky's struggling right now. Calipari is kind of right. He's it's hard to get right year in and year out. It is, consistently. Um, and – Michigan basketball had had gotten it really right for for a long time, and now absolutely, uh, and it, it feels it does feel as if things are at a tipping point, and you keep waiting for things to to go back up. Um, still waiting on that. Uh, <clears throat> as we record this Wednesday afternoon, this will come out Thursday morning. Uh, a program spokesman said the plan is for a Michigan coach to be made available on Friday. I said, "Will that be Joan Howard?" And that was unclear. Uh, I'm not waiting for that, uh, but whoever we speak to, uh, we'll ask them as I'll ask them as many questions uh, as we can, and do the same thing Saturday 
uh, after they play Eastern. And then we will be back to our regularly scheduled programming on Hail Yes, uh, with, uh, and then we'll be two weeks out from the Rose Bowl. Uh, Reiner, I know you're, you're all set. I'm all set. Uh, Sean, thanks for, thanks for joining us and breaking this down. Oh, it was, it was a pleasure. We got to, uh, we'll have to do it again sometime. And I, I by the way, I agree with, uh, I would, I agree with Reiner, you know, his best players were and, and losing Dickinson. I, I understand all that, but what's interesting. My last quick point is he showed great team building kind of sense, almost like a general manager at first mixing and matching, taking a few UB lines, guys, his own recruits, and then some of the transfer guys he brought in, but we just haven't seen that lately. And the recruiting has dipped off. So to me, that's really going to, to, to determine his future. Can he turn that around quickly? Yeah. Reiner. I have, no, I agree. And, and uh, it's, it's all about, you know, the, the Jimmy's and the Joe's, not the X's and O's. I mean, it's, it's, the, it's, it's true. the players. Yeah. It's the players that make everything. And, you know, you want top talent and, you know, they need to get top talent or else they're not going to compete, especially when only five guys can play at one time. Yeah. Yeah. Has not quite gotten the top talent. Uh, and then when you combine that with different issues off the court, it's led to, to this discussion, but, uh, but here they are still uh, in the middle of the pack in the big 10 uh, season well ahead of them. And uh, we'll see where it goes from here. Uh, so we got to give our thanks uh, to everyone else who makes this happen before we get out of here. That is of course, editor in chief, Nicole Avery Nichols, uh, executive editor, Anjanette Delgado, sports editor, Kirkland Crawford, audio engineer, Robin Chan, and our sports editor and show producer, Andrew Burkle. Uh, and thanks to everyone for listening, uh, reading, and uh, just following along. So please continue to do so. Rate, review, subscribe uh, on freak.com slash on the podcast section on Apple Pod, Google Pod, YouTube, Spotify, pretty much anywhere. So uh, do that, please. Uh, we'd greatly appreciate it. Talk to you next time.